Well, it's time now for our political panel, and I'm joined by Liberal Senator Ben Small and Labor MP Kate Thwaites. Thank you both for joining me. I want to talk first about the COVID-19 vaccines. Ben Small, how damaging is it for the government's rollout to have people like Matt Canavan now calling for the AstraZeneca jab to be suspended? Well, the great thing is that the Morrison government's response uh, to the pandemic continues unabated. So we've got observer status on the European Medicines Agency. We're very focused on those reports out of Europe, which suggest that uh, life's events continue throughout life. Uh, and those sorts of medical events we've seen in isolation aren't supported by causation or correlation with the vaccine program. So in, su in securing va uh, sovereign vaccine manufacturing capability in August of last year, Prime Minister Morrison is leading a government that's protecting lives and livelihoods. Are you concerned, though, that in speaking out, in calling for the suspension, that Matt Canavan might undermine confidence in the, in the rollout program? No, I think we've got a robust democracy here in Australia and uh, we have a national conversation about national issues. Uh, I would refer viewers to those uh, uh, sources of information that the government publishes on its websites as the authoritative uh, source of information should they have concerns or queries around a vaccine rollout, which is entirely understandable. Do you have any concerns about the AstraZeneca vaccine? No, I can't wait to roll up my sleeve and get my jab. Kate Thwaites, what do you make of those calls from Senator Canavan and others today that the AstraZeneca jab should be suspended? Is that something that the TGA should look at given that the risk of contracting COVID-19 in Australia remains low? I have absolute faith in the TGA. They are experts and they do their job really well. But I am concerned that government members are undermining their work, their excellent work. You know, there is a vacuum of information when it comes to the vaccine rollout at the moment. I know this in my electorate. I have a number of people calling me, particularly older people, concerned about when they might be able to get their jab, where they can get it. So there's already a lack of information that the government's providing. Now we've got government members saying, don't get it really confusing. I'm actually very concerned about this and I think it's something that the Prime Minister should address immediately. What is your assessment of, of the level of public confidence in the program at the moment? Like I said, I think the concern is that there's a big information gap. So what I'm hearing from people in my electorate is they just don't know what's going on. And if we have an environment where people don't know what's going on and we have government members essentially, you know, spreading misinformation and undermining the, the trusted people on this, uh, that is very concerning. Ben Small, we have had a statement from the Chief Medical Officer, but we haven't heard in person yet from the Prime Minister or the Health Minister. Should they be moving more quickly to uh, downplay these concerns today? Uh, both the Prime Minister and the Health Minister are currently very focused on uh, the COVID situation that's emerging in the region, particular challenges with respect uh, to our near neighbours in the north uh, in the Pacific region. So I guess it's actually comforting and it should be comforting for Australians that they're very focused on I'd keeping Australians safe though. because at the end of the day, 20,000 plus people are still dying from this disease every day. Uh, so we've done a superb job in keeping Australians safe so far, but we cannot get complacent. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, in conjunction with the appropriate health authorities. Uh, we'll see them uh, on the front foot uh, demonstrating to Australians that the vaccine is safe uh, and is in Australia's interests. Kate Dwight, did you want to pick up on that? I really just hope they could do both. I mean, again, the Prime Minister, I know he's a busy man, but I really hope he could look after PNG, because I agree that's very important, but also look after the interests of Australian people and, and make sure that the vaccine rollout here improves and improves quickly. And I think we've seen that from the government. We walk and chew gum at the same time on a number of important issues. So absolutely to be the case. And I will note that we will be discussing the situation in Papua New Guinea with our foreign affairs reporter Stephen Jedgetts shortly. But I want to turn to the rallies now uh, which took place across the country yesterday. Ben Small, what did you make of the Prime Minister's comment that uh, marches not far from here are being met with bullets? Was that appropriate language to use? Well look, I think it reflects the fact that we can have uh, uh, disagreements in our Australian democracy about any issue uh, and that Australians do have a right to process peacefully. Uh, I think on the, the broader issues though we've seen a very sensible response from the Prime Minister and or indeed the, the government down from there because we haven't sought to politicise this issue, this very real issue that we face in, in basically the workplace that you and I share. We haven't said that others are better or worse than we have. We've instituted a number of inquiries in, including a cross-party, cross-parliament inquiry to get to the root cause of these issues and as the Minister for Women Maurice Payne said uh, we look to not only own the problems, but we look to own those solutions that the people in this building and indeed any workplace in Australia deserve.
Kate Thwaites, Maurice Payne has defended the Prime Minister's comment. She says that that is a relevant observation to make. Uh, has the criticism of the Prime Minister been too harsh here? No. The Prime Minister could just not be further from what is going on in this country. I was out at that march at a lot of Labor figures, and I know some government figures were as well. The power, the anger, the feeling that people's voices are not being heard, that's what the Prime Minister is not acknowledging. And the same Prime I Minister entirely, that opened his door Are you door going to talk over me on this? Are you really going to talk over me on this Prime issue? The Prime Minister that invited those representatives... Ben, we're office, talking about respect for women in this workplace. Are you going to talk over me? The land. I think we can have a respectful conversation. I will let you finish your answer, Kate Thwaites. Well, what did ben. you make of, of the Prime Minister's comment yesterday? So... You know, again, sorry, I've lost my train of thought a bit there because I got talked over. Um, the Prime Minister does not get it. He does not understand what is happening with women in this place and in this country. And to compare what happened yesterday to a fight for democracy, uh, to say that really essentially women were lucky that they weren't shot at for protesting, so far from what's going on here. Um, I really encourage him to rethink, I encourage all the government members to rethink that being an appropriate response because it's just not. And that was so clear from what happened yesterday. I really want to pay tribute to all those women who did march yesterday, who showed how brave they were. Brittany Higgins, uh, hearing her speech yesterday, what a brave young woman. And the thing we have to do in this building now is honour that bravery. So. The Prime Minister is not there. He needs to get there quickly. You've recently returned to Parliament after the birth of your child. How do you feel coming back to this place as, as we have this discussion at the moment? It's a tough time to be coming back. Um, as you say, I've got a three-month-old and that's wonderful. And it is really important to me that I'm here, uh, that women like me are here because you know, this debate needs to have our voice in it. But I think it's a difficult time for everyone in this building, and necessarily so, uh, because we do need to have these difficult conversations and we do need to get change. Uh, so I'm very glad I'm here for part of that. Uh, I'm certainly doing everything I can to, to drive the change that we, we need. And I know on that, uh, you know, Labor women like Tanya Plibersek, Penny Wong, Labor men like Tony Burke, Anthony Albanese, we saw from Anthony in the chamber yesterday, we want change. Uh, we really need the Prime Minister to get with the program. Ben Small, you're new to the Parliament, having filled the spot vacated by Matthias Cormann. You come from a, a corporate background. What are your observations of the workplace culture here so far and are there any changes that, that you see need to be made? Well, look, I think it's an interesting point because uh, my first observation is that this is an inherently different workplace to corporate Australia. Uh, so I think, you know, direct comparisons between the two are, are probably a long bow. However, the sorts of things that Australians expect in their workplace, whether that's in an office tower, on a, on a high street, in a CBD, or indeed on a farm, or in a workshop in rural Australia, are the same things. They deserve to feel safe. They deserve to feel valued. And so I think that the, uh, the, the, the commitment from the government here is that we will listen. We will implement uh, the sorts of recommendations that emerge from those inquiries, because we see that as the right thing to do. Do you think that this is a safe place, uh, a safe workplace for women at the moment? I guess I, I draw on the experience of my colleagues and uh, and my staff, uh, the staff of those around me, and overwhelmingly, then their message is that whilst yes, their experience has been positive, we do nothing to take away from those. Uh, brave women who have come forward to share their stories uh, and, and I think the leadership of people like uh, Brittany Higgins and Grace Tame in this area is essential because it gives them the confidence to come forward. But I note that those people coming forward come forward from all parts of the building, uh, political, non-political, uh, public servants, uh, from all parties. So this is not a Liberal Party problem, this is a parliamentary problem and one that rightly we're determined to get to the bottom of. Kate Thwaites, what did you make of the reports yesterday about the private Facebook group for Labor staffers, allegations made in that group about male colleagues? Uh, have you witnessed or experienced any kind of behaviour like that? I haven't, but if I had, my message is it's not tolerated. And that is the message that is coming from Labor, again, from our senior women, Tanya Plibersek, Penny Wong, uh, like I said, from Tony Burke and Anthony Albanese. Um, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable in this workplace. It's not acceptable in any workplace. And I think, again, that's part of the reason why this conversation in this place is so important, because we should be leaders here. We are absolute laggards. There's a lot of work for us to be doing. Uh, and so, you know, we do need to move this away from 
the tactics of the day, from the way we often deal with politics in this place, and we need to get to real change. Is the Labor leadership doing enough to look into those claims that have been made? I note that many of them were anonymised, but is enough being done to actually investigate these allegations? So they are anonymous comments. Um, you know, if people want to bring forward uh, allegations and um, put more to that, I'm. I'm open to hearing that. I know all of my colleagues have said they're open to hearing that. There are a number of processes. There's a Labor Party process as a process here at Parliament. We can't and we don't want to force people who don't want to put their name to something uh, to have to come forward. It is really important that we respect them um, and the way they want to deal with this. But is it acceptable behaviour? Of course not. Um, and. You know, I want all these women to know, as a Labor female MP in this place, I see you, I hear you, I believe you, we've got to fix this. I want to touch briefly on the job seeker payment. Parliament will be debating this week the government's plan to raise the base rate of that payment by $25 a week. Ben Small, is that increase high enough, given that hundreds of thousands of people are still receiving job seeker? Yeah, look, Jade, I think that this is important to remember. Uh, this is the single largest increase in the rate of what is now called the job seeker payment since 1986. So this government is recognising calls in the Australian community for that to be increased. But I think it's also very important to remember that this is uh, a, a safety net for Australians who find themselves on hard times. It is not an income. Uh, that, that, that commitment by the Morrison government represents $9 billion of money that needs to be borrowed over the Ford estimates now, that's the next four years, uh, and will actually have to be paid back by uh, you know, future Australians. So I think it is an appropriate increase, uh, but it's measured and it's targeted at those who need it most. Uh, so I totally support the increase. Kate Thwaites, will Labor be supporting that legislation and will the opposition be trying to move any amendments? We're supporting the legislation because of course we don't want to stand in the way of any increase. People do need an increase. This isn't enough. Um, I do hear from people in my community, particularly older women, um, in the current situation who are really worried about what's coming next. So a lot of older women who may have lost their jobs in the last few months or last year during the pandemic, the jobs market has not recovered. Uh, those people are in a very precarious situation financially. This uh, payment will not meet their needs. So I, I'm concerned about that going forward. Right, and can I pick up on that just quickly, Jade, because not only have more than 93% of the jobs lost during COVID come back, but indeed the Australian economy for the first time since 1959 has achieved two consecutive quarters of GDP growth Numbers are exceeding fine, 3%. but that's not giving so these the Australian women a job. economic comeback is on, and those Australians that want a job are the priority of the Morrison government. All right, we will have to leave it there, Ben Small and Kate Waits.